Hello, boys and ghouls. Welcome to Dads from the Crypt. Uh, Jody and Mondo couldn't make it this week, so we're putting our 150th episode special back. So we'll consider this episode 149.5. Uh, but today, uh, I have some wonderful guests. The first you all know and love is our good friend, Whitney. Hello, it's me again. Hey, welcome back. Thanks for having me. All right, and our other guest, I think this is just your first time on the show? Second. Second. What was the last thing you did? Uh, Thanksgiving. It was on Thanksgiving, but it was, for, was it for a Crypt episode? Yeah. Okay. Um, He was, yeah, last Thanksgiving, he came on the Crypt episode. I, I'm blanking on what it is, but he is my eldest child. His name is JT. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Um, all right. So tonight we're going to do, or keep things loose, we're going to do a, a review of In the Violent Nature, a uh, new film. It's been like one or two months, but it's uh, just hit digital. So I had a chance to watch it for a second time. And uh, I think that's really important for a movie like this to see a second time because the expectation game, it was very kind of all over the place with this, depending on what you heard. Um, and for such a unique movie, um, I think, it, I think you need almost a second uh, one time to kind of let it wash over you. Then a second time to like go in on the movie's terms. Um, but this movie is really like a proto Friday 13th, Jason slasher, like mid, uh, mid series slasher. Um, but from but from I hate to say art house, but from a very different perspective, and not just coming into this. I from what I heard, and we're gonna we're gonna get spoilery pretty quick. We we heard it's a movie from the uh, perspective of the killer. We're with him. We're watching him, and I was expecting almost like the camera to not move from that perspective the entire time. Kind of like you're playing God of War, where the uh, you you have that camera over the shoulder. And it's one shot the entire movie. Yeah. And I was a little afraid of that. <laughs> it was like a third person video game movie. Um, Which. I mean, there's I definitely guess, shots of that for sure. <laughs> but yeah. There's a lot of shots like that, but yeah. it doesn't stick to that. And yeah. I think once you understand what they're doing. Um, and again, there's. It, I want to say the movie's vague, but it leaves a lot to interpretation. Um, and kind of, it gives you way more than I expected. Um, right off the bat, the first scene, really, you hear a lot of the lore of it. And then they give you a little bit more, a little bit more here and there. Um, but, all right, Whitney, I'll hand it to you to kind of start us off with your uh, impressions of this movie. Yeah, I mean, do we want to, like, give a short plot synopsis at all? Like, one sentence or... Yeah, I mean, basically... I mean, you did kind of... It's a violent slasher, I guess. Yeah, it's a violent um, slasher. There's a killer um, who's been buried, and is being his soul is kept at rest by a locket placed on the pipe that, I guess, goes down to wherever he's buried, and some teens unknowingly take the locket and awake him, and then the movie is really just following him, wandering around, hearing and seeing random things and going off, and he's looking for the locket, but he doesn't have, like, he doesn't have, like, a compass... Yeah. He can kind of sense when it's nearby, or at least he thinks he does. Yeah. But he's really just walking around, and then he hears something, goes to check it out, kills whatever he finds, and then moves on. Yeah. Yeah, I really... Okay, so um, I saw this at Etera Tuesday at the Alamo Draft House. Um, mm -hmm. So it was, like, an early release. And, you know... Back before COVID, the Terror Tuesdays would be like, they could be get really big. I remember like the Lost Boys sold out and it's like, you know, a big theater, um, a couple hundred seats. But, um, you know, now I think that we're not really getting close to sold out. Um, this one was packed, which really surprised mm -hmm. me because, it, you know, it's a new movie and typically they're showing older films that people maybe are excited to see for the first time in theaters. So I had a very reactive crowd. Um, right. There was cheering, there was gasping and just, it, it was really fun because there was one death that we can get to that the entire theater just started clapping <laughs> and um, the yoga death, I like to call it. Yeah. Um, I call it the name uh, of 
Yeah, I I saw the trailers for this and I remember it kind of being described as like an ambient slasher or just kind of like reinventing the slasher genre Mm -hmm. in a way, but staying true to what a slasher is. You know, you get that. I I know a lot of people that had issues with the dialogue, which I thought was a little one. I could like couldn't really hear it, but. You know, I was on some substances, so maybe, you know, having a beer or two makes my ears not work. (laughs) But I just remember, I think back to, like, Friday the 13th, and the dialogue was also really bad, too. Like, they're shitty teenagers, so, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. it it is what it is. Um, I ended up having a really fun time with this. Um, The kills were amazing, and I just kind of go back to, you know, All he's doing is he walks until he hears something and then he goes in that direction and then he just has everything he does is in the most violent way possible. Even if it's not a kill, like if it's just trying to open up a door, he's going to figure out the most violent way to open the door. He tosses a body through the door. Yeah, Yeah. or to get like the hatchet, he throws the body into the glass and it's just like... Okay, I mean, yeah, he just does everything in the most violent way possible. <laughs> so it was really fun. Yeah, I saw in the theater as well, somewhat towards the end of the run. It wasn't it wasn't many people in the theater, but I think it really benefits from that because you're not tempted to pick up your phone. And um, one thing that I haven't really heard many people say, but I thought this was a beautiful movie. Um, the scenery, oh yeah, really cool. I just love. I kind of want. I, I'm sure someone will, or maybe I'll just do it. I want a cut of just him walking through the forest and just that melodic sound would make that it's like just, a loop. Yeah, it's just like um, ambient serial killer walking. <laughs> right. But I, I would definitely say they have that perspective again of over the shoulder, but it never feels gratuitous. It never gets boring again because I think the scenery is pretty and they, they don't let it go on too long before he finds something. I mean, it's not like. I was afraid it'd be like a real time, like it's going to take him like 15 minutes to walk from point A to point B. They move things along much more. It's like, uh, sk- unlike Skinamarink, where you're staring at a wall <sighs> for like 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. I like, know that. I was worried they'd go more that territory. And they actually, and there's, and they change the shots. There's like an mm-hmm. overhead, sh- there's a great overhead tracking shot. Um, yeah, they, they break their own rules. I mean, they never stay that their rules, but the rules that people are expecting. Maybe my yeah. favorite day. Um, all right, JT, I'll play over to you. Um, wh- I've shown you a good handful of movies, and I don't know what you've seen on your own, but have you seen any Friday the 13th movies? I've not, no. Okay, but I know you've seen some um, Nightmare on Elm Street. We've watched some Halloween movies, so you're you're aware of the genre. Yeah. Um, so what were your thoughts after watching this? I really liked it. It had some really creative and brutal kills. Um, which didn't always go the way I expected, especially that uh, one yoga kill. <laughs> I'll be thinking of that for a while. I think that's the kill of the year for a lot of people. <laughs> right. Yeah. It it was really great. And I really, as you guys are saying, I really loved the pacing of it. It was so unique in how they did it. And they really nailed it. And I also like how they didn't lean a ton into music like a lot of other slasher films did. They really mm-hmm. let it breathe on its own mm-hmm. and trusted in the movie's own concept, I guess, to speak for itself. Yeah, there was no is it diegetic or non-diegetic. I always get them mixed up. But there, all the music we hear is either playing somewhere in within the realm of the movie. There's no jump scare, piano, or strings or anything. It's all within that. Um, and I like what you said. It's a very confident movie um, where you're trying something very audacious is the, is the word I kept coming to. Like there's someone, someone, they, the makers had an idea. They knew what they wanted to do and might not work for everyone, but they're doing it and they're sticking to it. And I think they really do the good job. But uh, yeah, let's talk about the yoga kill. <laughs> Let me keep jumping around. <laughs> Whitney, how would you describe it? Spoiler. This? Yeah, we're Spoiler totally alert. Um, sorry. What was the question? <laughs> How would you describe this? The yoga kill? Yeah. <laughs> um, back bending. Um, <laughs> uh, 
gosh, it's been like over a month since I've seen oh, okay. this, so I, I might not be the best as like okay. actually we describing. Saw, we watched it last night, so he takes. Okay, he perfect. A big, go, big, yeah, you go thing. describe it. He has this big metal hook. He behind a, a woman. He shoves it through her chest, turns around, hooks it on top of her head through her skull. Then I guess turns around again and then puts her this like his foot on her back and pulls the chain back through so her head goes in through her chest cavity and comes out the other side. Now, again, Whitney, you know I have watched many movies and seen many things. That's up there with something I've never seen before. <laughs> and also it's like it takes a while. Like it's mm-hmm. not a 15 second kill like you're watching the slow methodical walking and you're like oh gosh what's gonna happen we had, he had just previously had a pretty you know subdued oh, kill under the water, the water kill, yeah. and you just really kind of just watch someone drown effectively which on you know it's it's over the water you're not going underwater with them so you're it's a very like kind of a boring kill i guess you could say mm-hmm. but it it is what a drowning kill would look like if you weren't underwater. And so to go from that to like literally the most ridiculous kill, but like done slowly, it, my favorite part of it though, is like, he just like kicks her down right. the mountain and you're just watching her roll the entire, I lost her at one point. I was like, I don't know like where she went. Halfway. Yeah. And I was just kept looking with, where'd she go? Yeah, I think you make a good point. Like it was, fu- the pre- it was preceded by a very slow, kind of like boring kill in a way. I, mean, I thought was just, I found the suspenseful, just kind of waiting to see what happens. Yeah, but I think you're kind of lulling the audience to think, oh, we're never going to really see anything in this movie. It's all going to be kind of you know underwater or obscure. But no, then they go for it. So yeah. again, they're kind of set. That's a good. It's like a. It's like a punchline to a joke. It's a setup yeah. and then punchline. Yeah. I also really liked how they. Um, did it in broad daylight. They mm-hmm. didn't use any special tricks or darkness to try and obscure it in case they, were, they had bad effects or anything. They really wanted everyone to see it in all its glory. Yeah, that's a good Again, very confident. They're not trying to hide anything. And this is a lot yeah. of the crew that did Psycho Goreman, uh, which is full, chock full of amazing effects. So you can tell they, they know what they're doing. Yeah. So like everything again, looked really good. Yeah. Again, going into this, yeah, you could just find a friend, put like a dirty shirt on him and just film him from behind walking around the woods and call that a movie. Like that's what this could have been. But I think because you have the talent behind it that they were able to kind of actually make it really execute high, really well. And, and there's a good story there too, mm-hmm. because this is I can't remember if his name's Jimmy or Johnny. Johnny it's Johnny. Johnny. Um you know, he just likes cars. And there's this little <laughs> scene where he finds a car. And I'm like, I like Johnny. You right. know, I like him. <laughs> I want him to succeed. <laughs> he just right. likes cars. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, and I, I like, and they also even like switch up the look a little bit. Because he finds the fireman uh, helmet thing. Which, from behind, I actually I thought kind of looked a little bit silly. Um, but I, I think they're trying to, again, they're afraid that people are going to get so bored of that same shot. That they're trying to mix it yeah. up a little bit. They don't show his face too, too much. Um, no, there's only it's... one shot they really show his face. And they, yeah. they show his, like, sausage fingers, which, is, <laughs> which are just even more disturbing. And the mask itself, like, that old fireman's mask is really creepy. And it also is, like, ties into the whole story with, you know, mm. the fire. Like, there's so much lore in there. Like you said, watching it a second time, mostly just me listening to people talk about it, like, puts the pieces together of, like, the sheriff and the people that are, like, you know, <laughs> the whole thing about, like, wrapping him up and they're like standing over him and like okay i'm gonna hand you the shotgun and you're gonna take this and like it's so it's also crazy i don't know if you noticed the second time like when he gets shot in the face or gets like scissors thrown at him they just kind of stay on his face they don't like enter his body they just kind of almost stop um and Mm -hmm. i just thought that was a really interesting choice yeah, no, I mean, JT kept saying, what, these people are so stupid, that woman's just standing there. Like, yeah, I think you're supposed to, I think there is a, a bit of, like, fight, flight, or freeze happening there, where, like, you're just seeing something so, like, your brain can't, can't comprehend what it's being faced with. Um, but again, we're in a movie. 
it's supposed to be not supposed to be a hundred percent. So like characters are making really stupid decisions where they're like switching a gun, like just feet <laughs> over him. Like just take a couple steps back. I know. <laughs> but like again, but that's what you would see in these movie in, in this movie. But it's from again more his perspective. Yeah. Um, like I would think if we again if we were watching from the from the characters character's perspective in that shot we would be like behind them and we wouldn't see how close they were to him and then we'd yeah. be surprised when he grabs the gun but because we're watching it from his perspective we just see it happening a million miles away yeah and you're just like waiting for him to move but there's that suspense of like i know he's gonna get back up like <laughs> but mm-hmm. when is he gonna get back up yeah so again like every time you think you know where this movie's headed or you're it's it's leaning on a trope it flips it immediately um and again that's why moving along to like the last like 20 minutes or so or even crazier because we flip from his perspective completely to the the quote final girl's perspective and we don't even see him for the last point we've been following him almost exclusively for 20 for a whole hour and then they decide again this is audacious which i i really appreciate that they're like no we're gonna flip it completely you're never gonna see this guy again yeah and you're waiting for him to pop out and they're gonna have their final standoff but no we don't get that this is more like she's just kind of running off and then well because he grabs the other guy and this time i counted he just grabs the other guy and he starts hitting him with an axe oh my god over and over i counted 87 (laughs) times he hits them like that you hear at least yeah. Uh, because then it focuses on her and she's just kind of slowly backing away. Doesn't she take the necklace off too? She's like, I don't need this anymore. <laughs> right. Well, it's interesting because the rangers said you can't just give it to him. He needs to be laid at rest, yada yada. Mm-hmm. And then we don't see him go back to rest, but at least we see that he takes the necklace. So it's kind of like, you know, what the ranger might have just built up a myth in his head. Like, it's not like he got an instruction book. He's just like, well, this is what we did last time and it worked. So maybe all they need to do is just give them the, the necklace. Yeah. Um, and then we have her with the um, woman in the truck who was actually from Friday um, the 13th Part 2. Um, she was one of the counselors. And uh, a lot of people are saying that the story she tells about her brother, who's a ranger who gets attacked by a bear, is Johnny. I've heard different people talk about different ways, but she said this was 15 years ago. I don't think so. I think it was her brother was like the other ranger, like the ranger's dad. Yeah. Yeah. Not Johnny. No, no, no. I'm saying like, was it Johnny the one that attacked him? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. They're not talking about a bear anymore. Like, they're very much like methodically dancing around this. Cause she, she says a really interesting quote that I wrote down. Mm-hmm. I wrote a lot of notes while watching this. She says, um, animals don't get too hung up on reason. And I like really liked that quote. Yeah. I just pulled, I was just pulling up on my phone. That I wrote that down. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Again, is she saying that like Johnny is part animal or humans are part animal and we don't always need a reason to do things. I think that for me, I read it as like Johnny's no longer a human at this mm-hmm. point. You know, he's undead. Um, and, you know, it, it's kind of like, well, why? Like, you always ask, like, why is this? It? Why is Jason hunting us? Why is Michael doing this? Like, that's the scariest reason sometimes about movies is when they don't tell you why. Because mm-hmm. sometimes when they do it, it's like, Okay, well, whatever. So I think by having this allegory of like talking about a bear and it's an animal and, it, you know, they just kind of go after where their senses follow. It's just kind of equating to him of like, you can't just give him back the necklace. Like, you know, there's no reasoning with with Johnny. Mm-hmm. So wait, do you think the story Johnny was the actual killer in the story or you think it was a bear? I think it was Johnny. I think there was no bear. Mm. Again, yeah. we're hearing it secondhand from her. So they could have just told her it was a bear. And part of it was like, they talked about how they're tracking a bear that was killing other animals, but it didn't seem like Johnny had any interest in that. But again, our, we have an unreliable narrator um, who they might have just said was the bear was eating animals. So we don't know 
for sure. I, I'm not 100% sold it was Johnny. Um, yeah, I would I need to probably way. rewatch it too to get an idea of the conversation again because it's been a while. I always took it as like she knew what that person was hiding from mm. because she was so freaked out about stopping and like she really wasn't kind of arguing. Like she was like, I have to do this. And it's a tense moment because she stops the car and you're just like waiting for Johnny to pop back up. We are too. Um, that's what would happen in most other movies. Yeah. Like, you know. See, what I was so expecting to happen there is I thought that the final girl had learned from the story that Johnny won't attack you if he thinks you're already dead. So Johnny was going to come out. She's going to play let dead. And Johnny was going to kill the truck lady. Mm. And I thought that's how that was going to play out. And I was just waiting for her staring at the forest to see Johnny move mm-hmm. in the background. But... Or I thought it was gonna be like Johnny's mother or Johnny's sister that she would be that character. Uh, she, she was just gonna bring her back to, again which is what i thought we, she was gonna dump her for a yeah. moment too of like because i thought maybe she was the, the being the rangers like sister or something she's like oh you like you know he's dead and all this stuff so yeah and it leaves a lot into ter- to interpretation and in my hope there's going to be a sequel because I think this would be a great new serial killer slasher. Um, you know, as long as it stays in the hands of the people that made right. this, um, I want more <laughs> from yeah, it. I, it's one of the few times I would say I would love a prequel to see Johnny's origin or like, even mm-hmm. like ha- if they do like kind of like a extended prologue of Johnny's origin and then they jump forward to like the after of this, yeah, I, I like a sequel like with a flashback, which are sometimes annoying, but I think for this, I wouldn't mind. No, I think, yeah. yeah. So, JT, what's your interpretation of the story, the bear story? I think I I am pretty sold that it was Johnny. Um, I think it's clear that Johnny gets reawoken periodically, and they have to go through the whole song and dance of trying to get him to go back to bed. Um, <laughs> I everything really lines up with um, what Johnny would do. The only thing that makes me think that maybe it was a bear is that just drowning someone by holding them under a river doesn't really seem like his style. Yeah. But then that's also not really a bear's style. So I I could see it going either way, but I think it would fit best if it was Johnny. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things either if, uh, if you don't take it at face value, then everything she's saying is probably a lie and it was either told to her or she's just making it more palatable. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But so also, Johnny, mm-hmm. Johnny did drown that one girl. So, like, yeah, I it mean, is more likely than there, Johnny than a bear. He snapped her, uh, snapped her neck, or just drowned her, or what? But that, if it is a bear, they need to take care of that bear because that bear <laughs> sounds very terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I could see that drowning kill as just being the means he had at the time because he was underwater. But if you're attacking someone from behind, um. And you're you just happen to be standing in a stream. I I feel like he would go with the more brutal and yeah. mm-hmm. surefire way to kill someone than just yeah. Them. Do you think he walked all the way under the bottom? Do you think or once he got underwater, he start like swimming? Does he do like the breaststroke? Does he do freestyle? I think he just walked. It's kind of like okay. the movie It Follows, where you're like, if you go to another country, is it just gonna walk all the yeah. way there? Oh, is he going to wait for a flight? You know. Um, or there was that book, World War Z, and it talked yeah. about the zombies that just walk under the water, and you're like, ugh, I hate that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, it's, it, it would take a long ass time, but eventually, uh, if you, you're undead, you can just walk. You got enough, you have nothing but time if you're undead. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, See, I was more thinking, dude, you left your axe on the other side of the lake. Take that with you. It's going to take forever to go back and get it. Yeah, again, in the movie, I think people were afraid of this was going to be, they would show us walking him all the way. And, like, we show for, like, a, a couple seconds, but then they just cut to it. Like, um, Yeah. I'm glad I have that heard they... some people that, you know, did struggle with the pacing, though. Um, you know, I didn't. I think they kept it pretty tight, but I... I can imagine. And I think like you mentioned with a theater experience, you're less likely to look at your phone. Like Mm -hmm. I think the walking moments, because the violent is so violent, you need those moments to come down. And like, reminds me of like paranormal activity. Like 
you have the daytime sequences, which are safe. And then you have the nighttime sequences, which are unsafe. And it's like, you can breathe that sigh of relief. You need that tension building. And so while I get like some people could lose their patience with it, like it was very calming. I kept giggling every time he was walking because I'm like, he's just walking. Like it just kept making me laugh. Right. <laughs> um. Yeah. And again, I love that shot at the the very last, the very end of the movie where we're just waiting for him to pop up again. And that's what happened in 99.9% .9 of other movies. And they don't make it like you hear a twig snap and then the cuts to black. Mm -hmm. Like they don't even like do that. It's like, no, nope, that's just the end. That's it. Yeah. No, I would, I definitely say I like that ending better than if he had stepped out. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. First off, it would just be kind of dumb for him to somehow find them when we'd seen throughout the entire movie that no, he doesn't know where people are. He just happens across them really. Um, yeah, maybe have some mild sense of where his locket was. It made the most sense that he'd have no idea where they are, or at that point he wouldn't even care, since now that he had his locket, he didn't care what he killed. He just wanted to kill whoever was alive. So, yeah, I think that just having that be the end, with just the tension rising as it goes on, only to cut off with no release, was the best option they could have gone with, and I'm glad they took it. Yeah, it's very Absolutely. kind of a Sopranos ending where it's like. We're not gonna we're not gonna tip our hand which way it's going, but we're just mm -hmm. gonna end it right there and let you decide. Yeah. Especially after that conversation, like mm -hmm. it makes you kind of lull on it. There's not like a laughable moment or like a scary moment after it. It's just like and this is over. This girl's gonna be very fucked up. She's probably gotta go to therapy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's that scene where she's running through the woods in the dark. And that seems, I think that might be the scariest, the scariest one of the whole movie because my, one of my personal biggest fears would be getting trapped somewhere with no light yeah. and, and, oh. and can't see what's in front of you. You can't see anything for hours and hours and not having any sense of time or that is, that to me is one of the most terrifying scenarios possible. I think that scene, part of why it was so terrifying is because it immediately flips the script of. The whole movie, we know exactly where the mm -hmm. killer is. We know mm -hmm. when he sees someone. We know when they're going to die. All of a sudden, to completely in the dark. Mm -hmm. And we've almost been built up the whole movie, seeing it from the killer's perspective of, oh, we're the biggest thing around. We're safe. To flip it to, we're now the ones running scared. Right. And Which, again, that's totally, it's, it's so audacious. And I love audacious film filmmaking. Like, they're trying something against the norm. Um, you know, we've been told everything we've seen is exactly the one way, and then we're gonna, just going to flip it. You're never going to see him again. Yeah. Like the, the restraint of that filmmaker to not not show anything of of Johnny after that break is bravo. Hats off to that because that's that's some assured filmmaking to yeah hold off that character the rest of the movie. I'm. I think they easily could have messed up that switch in perspective because mm -hmm. it could have gone from, oh, we don't really know what to do with this concept anymore. So we're just going to go to a typical horror movie that they very easily could have fallen into that territory. But no, the decision added to the movie way more than it ever could have taken away from it with how they did it. I would love to know if they shot other endings and just mm -hmm. tried each one to see how it played. Um, if they did have more of him in the movie originally and they decided to cut back. Uh, or if that was always what they did. Yeah, it'd be cool to see this on like physical with a ton of special features and director's mm -hmm. commentary and anything that maybe got cut to or ideas that they have. I feel like this is a film that is like other movies, but also so different on its own that you can tell. I always love a horror movie that you can tell that the director's love horror movies yeah. and without trying to almost like be too in your face um because i thought with the truck scene it gave me like texas chainsaw yes. massacre ending vibes too and that was what i kept thinking of i was like this lady has to be a cameo i don't recognize it mm -hmm. but like is this alice from texas chainsaw massacre and i was like i don't think so i don't know if that age works out but yeah it was cool to see people figure out who she was and yep she was a cameo from something yeah she's she's actually a really nice character from that so i was like okay cool yeah. 
Um, there, there are some, even some other kills we haven't talked about yet. I love when kind of the stoner guy um, is leaning up against a tree, and then he just like uh, he uses a saw, just cut his face in half. That was that was great. And then there's like a bit of comedy because he's just carrying around the body, trying to carry around his body afterwards by like the neck hole, I guess. <laughs> Because that's the second kill, right? Because the first kill is off camera. Yeah. Yeah. Because he thought he saw the locket mm-hmm. or the necklace and it ended up being the wrong necklace. The, the number one <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Which was on his hat, too. And yeah. I, was like, I also was wondering if that guy, because they kept talking about how he was setting bear traps and the whole issue was like, you can't be setting bear traps like does he know about johnny or does he think it's a bear like that was yeah, kind we, of another we never see trip. that ranger so i don't know if that's the same ranger we see later in the movie i uh, think it is yeah I, I think it's a good bet that he knows he was trying to tell the guy to just stay out of the forest he wasn't even telling him don't set bear traps he was saying yeah don't go in that forest mm-hmm. so i think i think it was the same ranger trying to warn that guy yeah, I don't think the guy knew necessarily what was going on because he came in and he thought it was the sheriff coming back. And that's when he got his gun and it was, yeah. here's Johnny. <laughs> like, what was he shooting at in his own house? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because it's interesting because we see Johnny coming out of the woods and then he, the sheriff starts driving away. And you can see him kind of start to track him, but then he just gives up and then kind of tracks the other guy. Right. Um, yeah, so again, that's more of an off-screen kill, but again, I like that, you know, it's leaving more to the imagination, because again, you see those sausage fingers going towards his head. <laughs> and um, you hear... You don't, know what, you don't know exactly what he did to him, but... Yeah. Um, so yeah, that one was good, and then... Uh, and then it was good. the stoner, right? The stoner. Okay. And then the lake, and then the yoga girl, and then the, the, there's the one where he kills those two guys... Um, and again, I don't know how they do the face smash where he picks up the rock because mm-hmm. you know, the actor turns over. So, I mean, there had to have been some switch up, but I, again, I couldn't figure out where the seam was. Yeah. Um, unless like it was a foam rock and they just digitally added the splatter <laughs> after, or maybe it was like a double shot thing. I don't know. Um, and then again, the kill that we haven't talked about, which is probably arguably the second best is the wood, um, cutter kill. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. I've seen videos of those things like on YouTube or whatever or uh on TikTok and those things are cool, but then you can't look at them in <laughs> the same way now. Right. What again again I was watching that one because a lot of it is one shot where we see Johnny put his body there, his arm there, and he walks again. And we see him walk in front of camera, completely blocking camera. So I'm just saying that's a cut. Mm-hmm. He pulls the thing, the thing goes down, cuts off his arm, and he walks again in front. So I'm assuming there's another cut, and then he puts the guy's neck, and you can see him moving a little bit. Yeah. He's trying to move. And then he walks again in front of the camera. I think that's what he switched it up for the dummy. Yeah. I mean, it's just so brutal because he paralyzes him. Mm-hmm. And then it's just like, but he's still alive. Ah! I don't know what <laughs> and he you watch feel. it, and it's so slow. It is not a fast yeah. like saw machine. It's again, there's these kills, just like they go up and down. It's like off screen kill, super brutal stoner kill, kind of off screen under the lake kill, yoga kill. It's just <laughs> this like I was up thinking, and down of you don't know what's gonna happen. I was thinking during that entire um, wood splitter or whatever scene. Um, it would have been really, really funny if it just ran out of gas, like, halfway through. <laughs> you had to, like, rush to find some other brutal way to kill the guy. It's, it's He'd almost, probably just smash him. <laughs> it's almost like reverse Friday the 13th, the game, where you have to find, like, the gas canister to escape. Well, here, the killer has to find gas canister to power the machine <laughs> to kill the I would guy. like to think he would go find gas, and it's just, we're just watching him go find gas while the guy is just, like, half of his, the saw is in his head or something. <laughs> oh. We see him uh, siphoning gas <laughs> yeah. from the car. Like, yeah, like where did you learn to do that? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, I, again, I keep thinking audacious. It's, it's such a good way. Like, you can grab a camera and, and film, you know, something simple. But I think there's a lot of intentionality, a lot of purpose put into this. And they really knew what tropes they wanted to flip on the head and set us up to go one way or another. So I have a ton of respect for that kind of filmmaking. Yeah. 
I definitely think that this was the kind of movie or the kind of concept for a movie that they could have done wrong in a million different ways, but they did everything so perfectly and it turned out so well. And I'm really glad it did. And it almost makes me sad that they can't really do this again because it seems almost like a one-off, but it was so good. I want to see another movie like it. I've thought of that before where, and I'll, I'll just think of two options where I'm like, you mm. can't do this again. And then the movie subverted the expectations. Orphan, yeah. an orphan first kill where I was like, you can't do this again. They did it. Yeah. And then Creep and Creep 2 with Mark Duplass. I was like, I know this twist and what well, you made, you did it again. So I would, I'd like to hope that this will be part of those like films that they do it again and they do it not better necessarily, but just in a way that like so keeps us surprised again, because you know, that, that first stoner kill, you're like, Oh, I know what movie I'm in now. <laughs> like, what if they show us the flash? What if they do like a prologue with a flashback? And it turns out it was Johnny's father who killed him and not the fireman. He killed all the firemen oh, to cover up. Like, that'd be so sad. I'm just saying, like, that'd be one <laughs> way to like. Poor Johnny. Show that, again, the myth was actually just a lie, or was you know, yeah, changed over time. I I, could, I I don't even care if I need that. I just want more kills from this director. Like, I I, I will say I. Re- don't think that it was the dad because no, no. Before I'm... the first kill, we do see from Johnny's perspective the dad in the mirror talking to Johnny. No, yeah, I'm just saying like a, a way to like completely subvert what we're expecting. Like have yeah, um, yeah. Talking about though that yoga kill one more time. Like again, we've seen many kills, and that's something we've never seen before. I think we're all kind of like stirred up and started applauding. <laughs> <laughs> um, like that's kind of like the last time I felt that way was uh, Art the Clown when he did the you know the upside down split kill. Um, it's like up in that range of like, whoa, can you do that? Is that something? We, that's where we're at now. Okay, yeah, that's throwing down the gauntlet. And we do have another Terrifier movie this year, so maybe th- this will push them to do something even more insane. Yeah, get some ideas. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that's definitely a kill for the ages. Yeah, it, it, it's going to be so memorable and it makes me want to think like I don't I'm sure there's like a podcast or a YouTube channel out there that like, is this a kill that could actually happen type of thing? <laughs> no, like, I'm I don't sure want to know if like this kill could actually happen. <laughs> like really Mythbusters, the kills. <laughs> yeah, Mythbusters. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure the moment he punched a hole through her spine, she won't be able to stand on her own at that point. Well, yeah, so. there, yeah there's a bit of that. Um, yeah, whether she would like the, the physics of it, I don't really check out. I, I don't know about the anatomy if this, if it, if the neck would stay attached. There's a lot of things. Like, <laughs> it's the rule of cool. It's, it's the rule of cool. <laughs> yeah, don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um. All right. Again, I, so I was really curious to watch the second watch this the second time to see like, will I be bored knowing what's going to happen and being along for those kind of longer shots? And I was into it. So. That kind of shows me that this this really has a bit of a staying power. It's easily in my top five of the year. Um, maybe yeah. top three. We'll, we've still got a bit, a bit of ways to go. Um, but I think it'll definitely be up there. Again, it's one of those movies that I can see some people just not buying into. But once you buy into it, it's a great ride. Yeah. What would you rate it on a scale of like one to ten? Uh, ten being the our, best, obviously. Stick to our one to five that we usually okay, do. Okay, one to show. five. Um, I'm somewhere between a four and a 4.5. Yeah, I had a great time. Both I really enjoyed it. Both times I saw it, I appreciate audacious filmmaking. Um, time will tell a little bit long, you know, if it stays up there. But it's I I really really like this movie. Again, yeah. we haven't had a good like Jason style movie, even though it's quote not Jason, but it was pretty much Jason. It's basically um, Jason. Yeah. So yeah, it's. I watch this over most of the Friday Thirteenth movies, to be honest. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, I would like when it when it finished. I was like ten out of ten. This movie is perfect. And then I, you know, I sleep on it. And then I was like, okay, maybe you know, four out of five stars. But now after talking about it, I'm like, maybe it's a four point five. Like, mm-hmm. you know, my t- a ten is very hard for me to give out or like a perfect five film. Yeah. I'm like, I need to say like no notes. I have zero notes about this. Um, I think, you know, 
they could have made it a little bit like snappier. There's some of the walking that I'm like, you could have just like shortened a little bit from each one to, but I had a great time. And, but I just think about like the wider mass of like, you know, hearing some people be like, ugh, that like took me out of it. Um, you know, I, I want people to stick with it, you know, because it grew on me. Like, I didn't know what I was like the first 15, 20 minutes. I was like, I don't know what I'm watching. I don't know if I like <laughs> this. <laughs> and by the end, I was like cheering for it. So mm -hmm. All right. JT, what's your last depressions rating, et cetera? Uh, well, I've been known to be very bad at rating things. <laughs> you do you, man. Yeah. Um, I agree. It's hard to give out a perfect five. Um, but I think about the four to 4.5 is as really good movie. Um, I think it's a movie that had an ambitious concept. I'm trying to avoid my dad's word of the day, audacious. No. Um, uh, it had a really ambitious concept. It could have abandoned that or made, made it seem like it was almost embarrassed by it, but no, it stuck with it. And the only time it did abandon that concept, it was purposeful and it added so much to the movie. Um, and I think I do need to see it a second time <laughs> to appreciate some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. And I definitely think it might have had the one of the top kills of the year for any movie. Like it was one for the ages, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah. Uh okay. Moving on just a little bit, um JT as a relatively new horror fan, um are there any advice you'd like to give parents about showing their kids movies? Don't show them movies when they're too young. My well, mom. It, it, my well, mom. That, well, that's a hard thing for parents to gauge. We think we know our kids, but you never know how the kid's going to react, and we can talk about that incident. My my mom um, made me watch Nightmare on Elm Street when I was way, way too young, and it gave me nightmares for a while. And then recently I watched it with my dad, and I was like, wait a second. This is the movie I was scared of. This is almost nothing compared to some other stuff. Yeah, ten years apart, but but even you were fifteen or sixteen when I tried to show you the thing. Oof! And we and you noped out at the dog scene. Oh yeah, that that's. Uh, I feel like that's an outlier. The exception. Have you ever gone back to it? it? Nope. Uh, I'm oh. not ready to go through that again. Oh. I mean, come on, leave the dogs alone. I ho I'm looking at my thing dog figure I, because oh, I, I have <laughs> I have it. Um, only one part of it. I have a, the second part with the fully transformed. I still got to put it together, but that is a very good movie. I actually showed that to my parents. Um, mostly my dad. My mom was probably playing solitaire the whole time, but my dad introduced me to horror in my teens, and um, I mean, he introduced me to Halloween. So I was shocked that he had never seen the thing. Mm -hmm. um but yeah masterpiece so and gt would you watch the thing again or are you still not in that place uh, i guess if you're gonna twist my arm i could give it another shot i'm not saying it's i am a good winter horror watch so maybe yeah. by december you'll be ready <laughs> all right well whitney thank you for jumping on for this quick review Thanks for having uh, me. This movie is so fun. So yeah. if you haven't checked it out, highly recommend and put your phone away. Just stay yeah, stay definitely. in with the film. It's a really good um advice. Put your phone away, try to watch it with as much intention as you can. Yeah. Uh Whitney, is there anything you want to plug real quick? Yeah. So um speaking of zombies, this was my um because zombie is not my favorite genre because Johnny is undead. I made this my zombie week uh... movie <laughs> because it actually timed up then. Um actually I ended up I think I ended up watching Zombie 2, so maybe I just oh. never changed it. Um have you seen but... it? wait, have you seen Zombie 2 before? I had not. Oh, okay. What's your what's your two line review of that movie? Um Naked scuba diving, like <laughs> I was just like, that's all I can say. It no, with it was shark and with a zombie. This zombie shark, zombies and sharks, like I was blown away. <laughs> it was very, it was very good, and I can see why it has the impact that it does. Um, but so uh, 
the theme we're talking about zombies is I do a horror movie challenge called Oh My Horror. If you've listened to previous episodes I've been on, Crypt Daddy's on, you know all about it. Um, it's basically a uh, year-long movie challenge, 52 weeks, 52 movie themes, and you just kind of pick a movie along with a theme. If you're you know, not really sure what to watch. The I have a website with all the lists and each theme has a letterbox list full of films. So you can check out the Oh My Horror Movie Challenge at ohmyhorror.com. JT, thank you as always for joining us. Of course, pleasure to be here. All right. Well, next week we'll be back with our 150th, finally, 150th episode and we're also celebrating three years since we launched mm-hmm. our first episode. So it's it's a big banner week for Dad Snyder. I feel like that one's going to get really crazy. Yeah, we'll see what happens. And it's, uh, <laughs> Congratulations. You know, Thank like, you. That's such a huge accomplishment. Yeah. It's a holiday week, so we'll, we'll see what kind of mood we're in by the time that rolls around. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate everyone for listening. Uh, or sorry, I appreciate everyone for listening. I would appreciate if you give us a rating review on iTunes, a rating on Spotify, a like and subscribe on YouTube, and check out Dads from the Crypt Talk on TikTok. And with that, we thank you for listening to Dads from the Crypts. <laughs> Follow Dads from the Crypt on Facebook. Twitter, and Instagram, or I will follow you to the grave. (laughs) No, seriously, you really should watch, but be careful what you ask for. You may get it.